Some of the information you are about to hear, some may find disturbing. What police found in the soil was this. Seven bodies wrapped up in sheets and duct tape. They had to drink each other's blood. You're not making this shit up, right? Welcome to Two Guys, One Crime. We'll do the intro. Make the intro the recording of us trying to figure out what we're going to do to say. I don't know if I recorded that part. Oh, you don't know? No, I don't think so. I don't think. Oh, well, okay. I don't. Well, right. fuck it. We're, tr- we're 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 trying to figure out. Well, this is our intro, intro. now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we're working on an intro. So the intro, uh, we're changing it up now. You're gonna have to imagine before what Jim puts a track to the back of this. It's gonna be. Holy shit! What did I? I totally I forgot what we came yeah. the conclusion was. I think it was. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I have it. I have it. I have it. Uh, Welcome it to is... the podcast where two guys tell one crime. At a time. Ah, there At we go. Time. That's there what it go. is. This is the podcast where a father and a son talk true crime and everything else. We're two guys telling tell one crime. Before we get started with our story, head over to the, uh, our flow page. There you can link up with us. Flow.page slash two guys, one crime. Uh, there you, you can find all of our links from Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, even we are going to be going live a, a little more often, but uh, yeah, th- this episode is pretty cool. The crime in which we talk about is not necessarily a, a crime. Yeah. Nowadays. It's not, it's not really even a crime. Yeah, exactly. It's more of like a, I don't even know how to describe that. It's not a crime at all. It's just something that you do personally. It's a reflection. It's yeah. Reflecting. That's all it is. What they call it's journaling. She's just journaling. Yeah, that was the crime, <laughs> journaling. Yeah. So hope everybody enjoys it, and uh, please, like I said, give us a follow if you want to come interact with us on Twitch. We'll be doing that a little more frequently. We'll set up some dates to interact with everybody and talk with with everybody. Uh, if you are new here, hello. Thank you for stopping by. If you are coming back, welcome back. Uh, this is Two Guys, One Crime, where two guys tell you a story about one crime. We don't know what the story is going to be about until we start telling each other the story. Uh, this is a father and son podcast. We talk mainly about true crime. We also talk about ghosts, sometimes aliens, and sometimes other things. Today, we are going to talk about a historical crime, one that a lot of people know. Uh, but may not know the person behind this story. That, historical crime? Isn't that like a oxymoron? I guess, well, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Uh, now, this person was not the one committing the crime. Uh, she, it is a female, she was just at the forefront of handling business. Let's, let's, let's just say. Nice. Liberation. Liberation, exactly. Um <laughs> Before we get started, though, how is everything on your end of the Bay Area? Well, so far in the Bay Area alone? Well, let's see. Well, with you. No, no, no. Just, <laughs> just with you. <laughs> oh, today, I'm good. I'm actually pretty good today. I My back's not killing me as much. Ever since I went, we went to your house over the weekend, I slept on the floor. Yeah. It totally adjusted. I know it sounds <laughs> silly. I know you have weak... We can afford a hotel, guys. That's not the point. I had a bad sciatic and spasm. Yeah, no, he and I had, barely, I he could barely move. Yeah, I couldn't stand up. I couldn't lift myself up. It took a lot for me just to sit. But when I got to his house, threw some blankets and some sheets on the ground and a couple pillows, once I laid down flat, my lower vertebrae instantly adjusted. Really? Instantly, yeah, I was so out of a jump, but it, the pain was still there. The nerve, the sciatica pinch was still there, but my vertebrae, my lower back, instantly adjusted. Damn. Until the next morning. And, then and ever just... since then, now I'm good. I can get in and out of my bed. Um, Jeez. The only thing I can't do is, is uh, 
like bend down or cross my leg right now. I have a hip issue my, anyway. I can't cross my left leg over my right leg or pick it up above my uh, waist. Damn. So yeah. is, is this what I'm supposed to expect when I get your age? Dude, you keep fucking with that jujitsu, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, jujitsu is is here to stretch you out. It's supposed to, you know, move different parts of your body. It's it jujitsu is good for you, man. It's like it's like partially yoga, with chokes and arm locks. Well, okay. I tell you what, I'd rather do a jujitsu with chokes and arm locks. With if that's the case, then feeling the way I did because I couldn't do it. I mean, I, I can't do the whole yoga thing, the jujitsu thing. Um, t- I, I don't even like rolling around in the bed, you, let alone rolling around on a fucking mat. <laughs> you, you never thought about doing Diamond Dallas's uh, DDP no, yoga? I did. I did. I actually started to. And he did even you? had a session. Yeah. He even had a session. He still has a session for people who are, are the mobility is restricted. And you, you, he has routines where... I can sit down like I am right now. And a lot of it is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. You just got to keep doing it. I just don't have the space. No, oh, yeah, no. I know. Yeah. When I, when I started doing DDP it was at the other house on Monsanto's here. I, I don't have the space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. Well, other than that, I'm, I'm glad that you're feeling better. Um, everything over here is stressful. Your first grandchild refuses to wake up at a decent time for her school, so she proceeds to be almost late by two min by two minutes. She barely beats the damn bell. And, and now she the- goes to bed super early. <clears throat> yeah, I know. She gets twelve fucking hours of sleep, and she's still like, oh, "I'm so tired." I'm like, "Really?" Because I just got four hours of sleep, you jerk. <laughs> And your mom was still awake from last month. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and now the new one, she just got her her shots uh, yesterday. Are you serious? How did they that her, go? They gave her three shots. One on the left, two on the right leg. And she has been up all night. Both of excuse me, both of them all night, just up. And I feel bad. Cause there's really not much that I can do. And mm-hmm. on, on, and on top of that, because she's feeling sick, the baby, she's spitting up more right now. So my wife will feed her and then she'll lay her down and then you'll hear her start to cough. And she's cause she's spitting up fucking parent life people. Hey, little ones, you know, teenagers are demographic age that, that I see all, all the damn time. If uh, if you fuckers plan on having children soon, don't grow the fuck up. Yeah, allow yourself to grow up first. <laughs> You're gonna grow up fast, regardless, with or without a child nowadays. But a child is gonna put a little something extra on it. Yeah, they'll put you through it. Age range eighteen to twenty two and twenty three to twenty seven. Don't have kids yet. Just wait a little. <laughs> uh, maybe twenty three to twenty seven. No. 26 29 28 then you can start having kids anything before that back the fuck yeah (laughs) yeah and actually real quick before we get started on on the episode something that we didn't talk about is we lost three legends this year in the first month of 2022 who was that betty white died the first day then bob saget and then Louis Anderson. Oh, that's right, huh? Yeah. You want to talk about another... you want to talk about comedian royalty? That's top three right there. Almost top yeah. three, if not, yeah. you know, more. That yeah, was insane. Betty White, Betty White was a just she never took acting classes, you know that, right? Isn't yeah. <laughs> she was just fucking funny. Yeah. She was a natural. She was a legit natural. That's pure raw talent. Yeah, that's a gift. That's like Rogan. He's a natural speaker. And he, a nat- he's never he has never said 
he's never even spoke about his educational background. The guy just reads and he yeah. retains shit and he has he's vocal. Yeah. I can do that now, kind of, but it has to have like pictures in the on, <laughs> on the pages. <laughs> if it doesn't have pictures, I'm I'm probably I'm I'm no help. <laughs> well, Hustler, Playboy, and Penthouse don't count, son. Uh, well, they did back then, so booyah. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the show. I know we're probably boring people right now. So this is the overview, or this is the the what the 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 prologue to the episode we are traveling back in time to world war ii specifically 1941 the 40s this is soviet union russia this is a story about one um a very powerful woman like i like i had mentioned earlier this story is is surrounding a woman and what she did in russia and in world war ii during that time she was a fighter um which we get to learn some pretty interesting stuff about world war ii with women and fighting and not only that but she was described as the unseen terror of east persia iraq really okay yes so today on two guys one crime we are going to discuss the badass woman that no one saw we are going to talk about rosa shania you ready yeah she was russian she was russian oh, okay the story starts off like this oh hold on uh my source is today <laughs> uh. <laughs> because i didn't do it last one my sources today are rare historical photos.com all things interesting.com sandbox.us wikipedia and a few youtube videos that i will be tagging in the description and in the links below rosa shania is a sister of mikhail shania who was killed in battle she received the news and wanted to volunteer for the war well before we had started with that story let's figure out exactly who rosa was she was born april 3rd 1924 and Trust me when I say it, this story of this woman is fucking insane. Like people you mean of her childhood? Of her childhood, which just all in general. She was very young okay. when 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 she died. But any time before the 50s and 60s was nuts. I mean, even the 50s and 60s were nuts. But she grew up in Lin Leningrad, Russia, which is now St. St. Petersburg. Uh, her mother was a milkmaid and her father a vet logger. The pair had seven kids, two girls, five boys. Uh, Rosa was obviously one of one of the girls. <laughs> and she was a great a student. She loved school. That's all she wanted to do and that's all she wanted to 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 do when, when she grew up was to be a teacher. Um, she loved school so much, and this is what I'm talking about, the crazy part, because kids today, even my generation, even before me, probably wouldn't do what she did. She loved school so much that after gra graduating elementary school, she would walk 10 kilometers to the next town to Bursnik to her middle school. And if you need help converting that, 10 kilometers is eight miles. Yeah. What do you, wait a minute. Like right after school or right after she finished her primary. So she finished, school. she finished primary, her elementary prim, primary school. Okay. Graduated. And then the next, her middle school, the secondary school, I guess is what they call it. Yeah. She was like, I want to go to this school. And it was eight miles away. So from wherever you are right now, eight miles in any direction and walk and tell me how easy that is for you and very i'm sure she did not have comfortable shoes and you're in russia it's fucking cold yeah <laughs> yeah <very true. laughs> uh she would work at a pigsty with her aunt uh to to help out with with the family as, as well as make a little bit of money and like going to school she would walk there you know how far her aunt lived from her home it's got to be longer than the school. 
<laughs> 22 kilometers. Jesus. That's 14 and a half miles. She'd walk to school and then walk to work. She'd walk to her aunt's house. So right. from her house to her aunt's house was 24. From her house to her school was it was eight. 10 kilometers, eight miles. Yeah, eight miles. But she wouldn't do it in the same day. It's impossible. That's a 24-hour walk at least. Yeah, she would. Jeez. She must have had a bike or something. I don't know. This is just what I read. So if anyone wants to fact check me, check out those sources below. This wasn't uncommon in those days. Many people did that, though. They would travel and walk everywhere. If they yeah. didn't have a little buggy, you know, mule carriage or whatever, a horse or something. Or just being lazy. Or just being lazy. And then in 1938, she's now 14 years old and what some call stubborn, a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she was about average <clears throat> average height and uh had piercing piercing blue blue eyes and a very gorgeous smile that some people had had said uh rose's parents refused for her to continue school you you, you know you're living in, in poverty if your parents are like hey you need to stop going to school and help work work with the uh the family well, yeah. I mean, that's a learned behavior passed down from their generation above by how many hundreds of years. Yeah. yeah. Baby boomers screwed up a lot of us. <laughs> so we know. <laughs> Rose's parents, um, th they also wanted her to work and make a living and find a boy to fall in love with and have children. If I go to school, if I find young men, get married, <laughs> naked, get naked and wrestle with, with, with each other and have more babies. Yes. <laughs> who knows dude who knows i think that's probably what would what would have happened uh her response to this proposal however uh <laughs> was pretty fucking intense she said uh fuck you dad fuck you mom i want to learn things and then flipped them off and walked home i walked to uh, school she was very very into school it's determined she was passionate. I mean, that's good, especially to know that at 14 years old at By any way, time. Of the... I, I don't know how to say fuck you, mom and dad in, in Russian, so that's why I had to say it in English with a somewhat of a shitty Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sure the people will excuse you. I hope so. Uh, she ended up walking over 50 hours to the northern city of, and I apologize for this name, Ark. Archangels. Oh, in English, it's Archangel. <laughs> All right. Uh, there Very she good. lived with, yeah, there she lived with her older brother, Fedor Emelianenko. Uh, no, <laughs> that's an old yeah. MMA guy for those who don't know. But she got a student stipend and was able to attend the secondary school for free, 99, and she was set. So for her secondary school, for those who don't know, uh, stipend is basically a scholarship, and she was learning for free. Agreed. So like I said, she loves school. She loved school. She loved helping, uh, learning, excuse me, and knowing more and expanding her, her mind. Uh, I guess you could say like Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that was until June of 1941. Uh, those damn Nazis done broke through the USSR's western borders. After that, the economy crashed and Rosa lost access to her free school. Fucking Nazi bastards breaking down walls and stopping her learning time. She must break them. Yeah, never good. <laughs> no, no. Uh, to make some to make some extra cash, she then became a kindergarten teacher. She was 16 years old. No, 17 years old. Excuse me. She was 17 years old and a teacher. So she was yeah. teaching kids. Like I said, she loves she loved to learn. So I'm assuming her being a teacher kind of just naturally went right into what she wanted to uh, do. 
Now that was just to make extra cash for her living. Uh, she then eventually volunteered uh, once for an air raid duty of the school. Basically what that was, she stand, she stood on top of, of the school roof and made sure that the airplanes from enemy soldiers weren't flying over. And if they were, she would have to then radio or yell out, Hey, they're flying over us. They're going to drop bombs or shoot at us or whatever. She volunteered for that. How many people do you know would volunteer for, for that? Would you even probably volunteer need, for that? No, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. So she's pretty badass well, I, so far. I mean, nowadays, uh, back then, who knows what anybody would have done. There wasn't a lot of available to people back then, especially in that part of the world. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. So if war was an exit, some sort of war to, war affiliation, you know, she yeah. was living large. She was having fun. She was doing what she wanted to do. Good for her. Yeah. And then December uh, 4th, Rosa learned that two of her five brothers were unfortunately killed in battle by them damn Nazis. Uh, that was Mikhail and Fedor, so the older brother that she was living with. Um, Rosa would frequently ask passing soldiers, low-ranking to high-ranking soldiers, in the city if she could actually join the forces with them most of them would laugh and tell her that quote war is no place for women go back home end quote <laughs> however due to the shortage of men and large casualties and a high commanding officer of the red army agreed to have women join the battle this is true rosa was one of the first to join along with 10,000 other women. So much like the women of the U S in world war two, who helped the men, unfortunately they didn't help overseas. They were actually the ones putting the ships together, the airplanes, the ammo and the so on and so forth. The difference with this is the women of the red army actually joined battle. Like they saw battlefronts. They saw mm -hmm. the worst of, of the worst. And then June 19th, uh, June 22nd, 1943. And by this time, uh, Rosa is now 19 years old. Uh, she was accepted to the, and again, this is Russian. Give me a break. <laughs> Ves, Ves Butch program. She was a butch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What is it like a specialty, like a sniper? Actually, yes. Oh, it is. It is. Uh, here she's she a actually, sniper. Yes. So holy shit. Okay. She met two people, uh, two other women: Alexandra, Sasha, Veko, Vekovia, and Cler Claria, Kayla, Petrov. The three were called the Vagrant Three. Now she would write in a diary, which by the way, this, and this is where the crime comes in, which I, which is hilarious to me, but the crime that she committed on several times was having a diary and writing in that diary of what was happening of her daily life. Well, back then I'm sure they considered some sort of spy or espionage. Espionage. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes yeah. sense, which makes yeah. sense, but it, it's also kind of funny that they're like, you can't write it in your diary. <laughs> <laughs> um, now she would write in her diary and in one of her entries, she said this quote, always nice to have a girlfriend, Sasha, I am with you. And sadness is sometimes fun. I share with you all. That is my soul. I brought uh, Colonel Nevolshevov my letter in which I asked to be sent to the front and criticized by our officers, end quote. She wanted to go to the front. She hey, wanted to see man. battle. She had drive. She was an ambitious young lady for sure. Crazy. And then this is where she actually joined. The f she was one of the first uh, female snipers to join the Sniper Academy in 1944, around her 20th birthday 
How crazy is that? Before we go any further, just the fact that people in their 20s, even right now, but back then in World War II, people in their 20s were going to war. I'm not surprised at anything. I mean, people were, I mean, hell, just World War II and Vietnam, people were kids and women and young men were signing up to try to be enlisted at 17, 18. And that was 70, 60 years earlier. I'm not surprised. But again, we live in a different time. So who knows what living day to day back then was like? That was probably more of an honor than anything. Probably. Actually, now, yeah. now, now that you put it that way, you're, you're probably right. But she's still. Or, or a scenes of eating, housing, clothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Medical, dental. It's just, it, it, it's, it's just crazy because people back then lived. <laughs> it's, just, it's gonna sound funny but it sounds like you know awesome powers they lived dangerously <laughs> <laughs> it's true they lived very dangerously like they were very different people fucking now 50 no 80 years ago that was almost mm-hmm. 80 years ago well, yeah world war one was over 100 years ago no that is 80 years ago how fucking wild is that? Uh, when she went to the female sniper academy, she actually graduated with honors. Now, like I had mentioned before, she was really into school. So learning how to shoot, learning the trajectories, learning the bullet, you know, um, how you know, how to reload a gun, how to disassemble your, your weapon. That came with ease. Fucking nerd. Well, the parts weren't as freaking intricate as they are and have you ever disassembled an ar-17 an ar-15 or a, yes i have a, it's very it, easy oh is it yeah yeah it's, no, it's, i've never, it's not I've never even shot one i know i, I want to buy it, but i've never even shot your uncles or your cousins i've never oh. shot any since my heart surgery i've never shot any long arm very easy now rosa not only graduated with honors but she had impeccable aim She was really fucking good at shooting a gun. Uh, So much so, so much so, the instructors pleaded with Rosa to stay in school, not go to the front, and teach other future female snipers. When this was requested by one one of her captains, she got a little aggressive. Rosa grabbed her instructor by the coat, pulled him close, and said... If you claim to have big balls, that's just an easy target for me. <laughs> that's fucking savage, dude. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> she then shoved him by his face and proceeded to walk to her higher ranked officers and wanted to go back to the front. She kept she kept telling them, I wanted to go to the front and I want to go to the front. By the way, that was a joke, by the way, the. The, the oh, big balls. <laughs> I've, I'm sure she thought it. I'm sure she did. That yeah. actually that that should be written. This should be a movie too. Uh, I'm but, sure they made. I'm sure they made this movie in Russia at some sort, some point. They, they had to have. Yeah. Uh, but she did refuse to teach. Now, granted, she was great at teaching. She was great at learning, but she wanted to do her part in avenging her brother, the the death of her brothers. She yeah. wanted to do her part in being something bigger than just a teacher, so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but the Soviets enforced that strict rule of not having diaries. It, it was forbidden to have it, much like, like you said. It yeah. was considered espionage. Uh, this is now April 2nd, 1944. Uh, Groza, Groza, Rosa graduated to a commander of the 184th rifle division wow commander impressive three days after she got her first confirmed kill can you imagine that no dude and those firearms were fucking they might as well be shooting a log (laughs) they were heavy they were solid wood yeah solid wood and like damn near steel yeah if it wasn't steel uh But she was also able to get recognition from a local newspaper. She told the press, quote, finally, in the evening, a German soldier showed up in the trench. 
I estimated the distance of the target and was over 400 meters. That's about a mile, a quarter of a mile. A suitable distance is what she said. When the Fritz went on the Fritz, keeping his head down, went toward the woods. I fired. But from the way he fell, I knew I had not killed him. For about an hour, the fascist laid in the mud, not daring to move. Then he started to crawl. I fired again. And this time I did not miss. <laughs> in the dark? End quote. Yeah. Damn. Can you imagine being that guy? He didn't hit and was like, oh, oh, fuck. Okay, don't move. Don't move. All right, I'm good. Any of them. Any For soldier. For an hour. Yeah, he sat not there. seeing anything. And the fucking and, and- sniper was like, please just move an inch. I fucking dare you. <laughs> move. <laughs> In shock, she collapsed into her trench and said multiple times, I've just killed a man. I've just killed a man. I just killed a man. The following month, Rosa received the Order of Glory, which is the Russian Medal of Honor. She was so good at shooting, she was known for her double hits. You mean shooting them twice? No. No. Yes, sorry. Shooting them twice in quick succession. Yeah, because that's a bolt action rifle. Right. So she'd fire Holy once, clack, 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 pow, and do it again. Jeez. If anyone, yeah, if, for those who don't know what a bolt rifle is, a bolt rifle, you get, there is a, a lever on, on the gun that you have to lift, pull back towards your shoulder to empty the cartridge or, or the, the, for those bullet, the round, yeah. the round push it back forward and then lock it back into place to then aim with a scope and shoot again. She did it so fast that she got recognized for shooting people and killing them for literally going one, two, three, four in a matter of milliseconds. And I don't think their scopes were very high in. No, they don't have as far as (laughs) vision. Or thermal. No. <laughs> as far as even magnifying, I don't think they had a magnifying power of more than what, maybe three, four, if that. Who knows? I just yeah, know you four weren't times very the normal sight, if that. Yeah. Uh, but during her time in the front, she was actually very upset. The leading officers kept putting Rosa in the back, which was assigned to women. The Soviet policy was designed to have women stay in the back, men fight in the front, which is why she was a sniper. They don't want her at the front and taking the bullets and taking all of that uh, fire right yeah. away. They yeah. wanted her to stay back and take out you know, the, the nests, as, as, as they're called, or, or the people. The other in, sniper. Yeah, the other sniper, the other people in the trenches, they wanted her back and she was like, fuck that dude. I want to run into their titties blazing and just fuck someone up. (laughs) It happened so frequently that Rosa would eventually go AWOL. She did. She went AWOL. Uh, She couldn't stand sitting, sitting around waiting to kill Nazis. And she would eventually what before coming back, she went AWOL, killed a couple more and then, they took her back because obviously they need fucking soldiers in World War II. <laughs> uh, she would run up to the front of the line to increase her tally of, quote, dead little Hitlers. <clears throat> That's what she called them. Dead hey. little Hitlers. Can you imagine their stories they tell in their part of the world? Fuck no. <laughs> I mean, wait, wait, who? The, the Germans or the just, Russians? Just say Russian, how Russians are explaining their life. I mean, we're reading a story about it, but can you imagine her, you know, personal experiences and she might be doing a commentating, you know, just what she's seen. And we hear about it on TV all the time, a lot of soldiers, what they've done. And, you know, it makes us look like superheroes. Yeah, we no have shit. the best of everything. Can you imagine them, you know, who had didn't have the technology, obviously, but how they lived through it, how they went through war. No, I, I, I honestly can't. No, 
I, I really can't. I wish I could, but just hearing the crazy shit that she did, like I'm picturing it in my head as if it was like a TV show or a movie. Like I can, you know, get the feel like that, but to personally be there and having fucking bullets or shrap shrapnel just whiz by your face, barbed wire, razor wire, the mud, the cold in in, in your lungs, the wetness everywhere. Your clothes are mm-hmm. drenched in either blood, sweat, tears, water from rain. Yeah. Fuck no, dude. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't do it. Now, according to Magor Deg Deg Trevor. Trevev- <laughs> Just say his first name. <laughs> Magor Deg Trevives, a reporter. Uh, and <laughs> Just say, according to a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> a reporter and a commander over Rosa. Between April 6th and April 11th of 1943, um, excuse me, of, of 1944, she had shot and killed 13 enemy soldiers while under fire from artillery and machine gun fire. Yeah, dude. I mean, like I just ima- said, no. <laughs> can you imagine how cold, not cold as far as temperature, just the, how emotionless she, she probably had no emotion. She could. She probably just was a, a distant stare. Yeah, no, yeah. she couldn't. There's no way. There's no way that she could have been like, oh, man, I hope this guy doesn't have family. She was like, no, fuck that guy and his family and just popped him twice. Just in anybody. Just can you imagine what she felt like walking through knowing what her purpose was to do? I'm sure she felt ballsy. Oh, I'm sure every soldier, everybody has gone <laughs> through that. But what's that term? War is hell. War is hell. <laughs> yep. By May. Then the following month, her kill count raised up to now 17. Uh, she killed four more people. Uh, the following month of June 9th, a Soviet newspaper, which here we go again, Unchergervizium Var- Varaga. Yeah. Just a Soviet newspaper reported. <laughs> reported and featured Rosa on the front page. She was posing with her uh, guns, which you you can find this newspaper clipping and everything about her. When you see her, she is very beautiful. White, you know, uh, uh, a younger white woman, blonde hair, blue eyes. Very beautiful woman that you would never like. She's not like some crazy Russian woman with like a fucking wonky missing eye <laughs> and a hunchback like a fucking savage. No, she's a beautiful fucking woman. <laughs> like uh like uh the mom from goonies <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> exactly no that was not her by september 1944 uh rosa has now killed five more nazi soldiers that's uh going up to 20 what is that 17 18 19 20 21 22 nazi soldiers that she has killed so far she became famous in the soviet news- newspapers and being dubbed the Red Army Girl. Headlines read, One cartridge, one cartridge, one fascist. Another called her the Unseen Terror of East Persia. Another, a tall, slender sniper with a with smiling eyes. Like, if you were to look at her, you're mm. like, wow, this is a mm. very beautiful young woman. I don't think anybody would, would have expected her to be taken heads off this is also why there's so many pictures of her today is because she was featured in these articles holding her yeah i'm I'm, i want to i want to look now but i don't want to i don't want to look during the story yeah uh she was holding her rifles looking through the sights of the rifles smiling etc like you said earlier they appear to be superhuman to people like you and i people who are not Mm -hmm. soldiers so she is without a doubt only human now, like most young adults, specifically in her age, emotions would get involved. More than just a badass sniper, she was a young woman, a young woman without love. And again, back in those days, you it was almost like a like a um, not a rite of passage, but you know, women were expected to be married, to have children, and to do everything. No, I would say, yeah, that's expected then. Nowadays, it's not expected. No. And that's the same as being 
you know, consider it or cancel. Is that cancel culture? Cancel culture or something like yeah, that? Yeah, cancel culture. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I, I just know that you couldn't. It's not expected for a woman to fall in love. And then on October 10th, 1944, she wrote in another entry of her diary, "Quote: I blame this scum that comes with army life." wrecking everything not caring about a girl friends and the occasional boyfriend only to lose many of them in battle i remember misha misha pardon pardian what a guy killed he loved me i know i loved him i felt very sorry for him end quote hey that's a human emotion that's genuine She also had another sad entry in her diary, quote, frost in the tank, unaccustomed to the tank smoke, and it hurts my eyes. I can't breathe these fumes. Slept like the dead. I'm finally sure I'm not capable of love, end quote. (laughs) That's brutal, dude. That's That's brutal. That's torturous for a young woman, a young woman. Let's just say a person. Can you imagine having to go through life if you? Yeah, but imagine her right now. Like I said, no. Back in back in that time, right? Just put yourself in that time. Not even just being her, but any woman for that matter. Around that time, it was expected of you to do certain things. And I don't think I could put myself in anybody's situation, let alone remembering what the hell I went through. And it wasn't nearly as bad. It wasn't even bad <laughs> as a kid, but doing that at 14? No. 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 Starting at 14, I should say. And yeah, no, I I, I wouldn't be, be able to do that at all. Uh, by now, this is uh, 1945. By now, she is in her early 20s, still 22, I believe. By January 16th. She claimed to have, quote, an unseen force pulling her to the front of battle, end quote. She followed that with the entry of melee combat does not discourage me. She was ready to fucking go throw hands. She's just black. She's just there's no nothing in front of her but black. And again, when you see her face and you are listening to these and reading these entries, there's you wouldn't think. This is coming from the same person. By January, by the following day, two more entries were made. It says, it seems our journey may be ending soon. Most of the battalion have perished. 72 of the 78 to be exact. She's one of six that survived. One of six. Whoa. Jeez, dude, that is, that's kind of sad, but war is hell. (laughs) War is hell. And another entry that she says, today for me seemed like a month, nearly vomited out all of my body parts, bandaged the wounds and moved on. Frost, hunger, Went went into a unit. The guys threw some filthy compliments my way, filthy language everywhere. Again, we say between you and I, you know, people who come back from war, these guys are men and women are people are like superheroes. They do shit that we can't even fathom. We can't even think of, but we're still human. Mm -hmm. People are people and people are sick. They're using filthy language to a colleague. Meanwhile, the fucking what's more than three fourths. Uh, way more than your battalion's gone and dead you're probably covered in one of your buddy's blood and you see a woman there and you're like oh let me let me see your fucking tits yeah. or something it's anything derogatory yeah sick a guy is still a guy <laughs> guy is still a guy just a few days later on january 24th she wrote to the commander of the regiment he grabbed me like a street hooker outside of a brothel the same day, a drunken soldier forced himself on her and kissed her. There's six people left. <laughs> and all these fucking dudes can think of is sex. Which, to a point, 
I can somewhat understand, but I would much rather get my life than go have sex. <laughs> Only probably are living. This could be that, that this just could be it. I might not be alive after this. I may not be alive after this. I might not be, you know, who knows? Whatever the circumstances put them in that frame of mind and why they treated her that way. Hell, they probably, <clears throat> they probably don't even know that she's probably saved their lives at some point. Probably. And then on June 27th, 1942, while on patrol of their, of their area, the six of the six soldiers that are remaining, uh, two of the six soldiers that are remaining uh, went on patrol and, and discovered two bodies in a field. One of the bodies was dis- disemboweled. Its chest was blown open from a large explosion. Uh, it was assumed either a grenade or a landmine had taken this person out. This person was, was Rosa. Oh, the female. Yes. She was protecting her fellow soldier from gunfire. The two patrolmen brought Rosa back to the med tent. By the following day, Rosa was pronounced dead. I'm surprised they didn't pronounce her dead that following day, the day prior with a huge hole in her chest. As mm. I had mentioned in, in the beginning of this, Rosa racked up a total of 59 confirmed kills, making her one of the deadliest snipers of the Red Army. Just one. There are multiple but she was one of them with 59 first Soviet female sniper to be awarded the order of glory. Like I said earlier, that was similar to the medal of honor for us. Rosa was buried with full military honors in Zegnich, Kilingrad, Osblast, Russia on the bank of the Lena river. Three streets in the city of Russia are named after her. A village in Yidma, has a museum dedicated strictly to Rosa and a local school where she studied in 1931 to 19 to 1935 has a commemorative plate of her history. And to this day, her legacy looms large in Russia. Jeez. I like the story. Interesting, huh? I really, I really do. Yeah, that's. Uh, and like I said, don't like the outcome. I don't like the outcome. A better ending, but. <laughs> yeah, me too. Trust me. But like I said, that was her her crime throughout this whole thing. But a pretty interesting, silly crime, of not having a diary. Or no, I but I, I get it. Now it's obviously you know it's probably um, what do you call that? It's probably um not looked as as a crime it's probably uh historical yeah you know it's probably historical so wow that was good liked it yeah i just you know i like stories where you know you know people take women for granted because of their gender yeah they're not weak they're not weak at all at all there's some strong like women, man. Mentally, there's guy. I know guys that are weaker, and met them, know them, know of them. People are emotional. They're just people. No yep. one, like I said, <clears throat> we were taught to believe women were the weaker of the two, male, female, and it's it's proven. It's going to continue to get proven. Oh yeah, that uh, they were just as equal, if not stronger, in many ways. But yeah. I'm not misogynist. I might be ignorant, but I will give props to where they are well deserved. All the time. She was a badass. <laughs> she was badass. She was awesome. But uh yeah, yeah I, I was going through Instagram and I found I found this picture of a beautiful young woman. And I was like, Oh, that's interesting. And then read up the, on the story and I was like, I'm talking about this. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you everybody for stopping by. Thank you everybody for listening and or watching. Thank you for coming back. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Um, We will have more like it if you like it. And we will have a lot more crimes to be talking about as well. Big Jim has a few stories that he's, that he's going to be talking about soon. So get more audio, more audio. I'm not good with video shit. So it's going to be strictly audio from me. Yeah. 
uh, they will be just him. He's he, mm-hmm. he wanted to do it with just his voice, so he'll he'll be doing some solo episodes pretty soon. Um, the reason not because it, <laughs> you're going back to work. You're going back to work. You got the babies, your wife, yeah. everything. So your 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 life is going to get a little bit more hectic. Yep. Yeah. My my <laughs> so, my six my six weeks of freedom is up. Yeah. So it's going to get a little bit more challenging for him, but we're going to continue on doing what we're doing. So keep on keeping on. Yep. So thank you everybody for listening. Uh, please head over to our flow page, flow.page slash two guys, one crime. There you can find all, all of our links, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole nine. You come interact with us. You can also follow us on Twitch. We also have a Twitch channel now. Um, there we will be going live certain times. Uh, we will be doing live episodes a little more frequently now. I think we should do that. Uh, it's it'll, probably, I mean, that's get, probably when you're going to have time to do a recording. We're just going to have to do it spontaneous. Yeah, right there on the spot. Yeah. And I think yeah. that I think that would be really fun. And then we can upload sure. it, you know, both sure. uh, video and and audio. So that that would be really fun. Um, I think that's about all I got. You have anything else? No, no. I just wanted to let everybody know things are going to be changing a little bit as they, as they have been, but for a positive reason. And we're just trying to get back to adapting to life before podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>